Good morning. Good afternoon, actually. Um, I think it's afternoon, yeah. It's actually afternoon. Um, it is Thursday, and my name is Brad, and I am Thursday's contributor to Rhythms of Grace, um, which has its home on Nature Coast Church uh, Facebook page. And Nature Coast Church is in Homosassa Springs, Florida. So um, I am Thursday's contributor. I'm actually a minister at Nature Coast Church, and it is Advent. And I'm going to talk about Advent um, again this week and probably next week as we head toward Christmas. Hard to believe we are less than two weeks away. So next Thursday, we will be less than a week away uh, from Christmas. So I'm going to actually read from the book of Matthew uh, today. And uh, I'm going to read about uh, John the Baptist. Um, and John the Baptist is, uh, he is the, he's like the, the big Advent uh, character. He is like the quintessential figure of Advent. Hey, John Paul, how are you uh, doing? It's good to see you and uh, to everyone else who may be listening. I'm going to read about John the Baptist, uh, who is the figure of Advent. He's the one that precedes Christ. He's the crazy prophet uh, that stands in the wilderness and dresses weird and eats weird things, but uh, he's there to proclaim um, the coming one, um, Advent, um, waiting and coming in the in the midst of uh, Jesus uh, being um, coming the first time. So we have John the Baptist. Matthew 11, I'm going to read. I'm going to start in verse 2. Now when John, John the Baptist, was a preacher, he preached repentance. Um, and um, the Jewish people, the Jewish leader Herod, the religious king of the religious people of the day, put John in prison and um, John is there, and John's in trouble um, in prison, and he is aware um, that he is in trouble. And so he, um, so later on, John heard in prison about the deeds of Christ. He heard about what Jesus was doing. So he had some of his disciples uh, send word to Jesus, and he said to them to ask Jesus this question, are you the one who is to come? Or should we be looking for someone else? And Jesus answered, go and tell John what you hear and what you see. The blind receive their sight and the lame walk. Lepers are cleansed and the deaf hear and the dead are raised and the poor have good news preached to them. And blessed is the one who is not offended by me. So here's John the Baptist, uh, John the Baptist who baptized Jesus, John the Baptist who um, proclaimed, um, John the Baptist who leapt in the womb when Jesus was in Mary's womb um, at the presence of Christ, John the Baptist, the one who said, look, here is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. John the Baptist um, has made the statement, he must increase and I must decrease. This very same John the Baptist, um, the quintessential figure of Advent, is now having his doubts. Is Jesus the one I proclaimed as coming? Is he really who he says he is, and maybe even who I proclaimed him to be? Or should I actually be waiting on the coming of someone else? Have I made a mistake? Should I be adventing uh, for someone else? Because I'm looking around, and I am in prison, and my idea of what Jesus Messiah was going to be it needs some clarification because it's not what I expected to be because in my and John the Baptist's mind, I should not be in jail. I shouldn't be in jail from someone who hates me and I shouldn't be on the verge of losing my life if Jesus is the one. Are you really the one, Jesus, or should I be looking for someone else? 
you know, John's idea of Jesus as Messiah and the glory that Jesus would bring is not so much unlike ours. This story actually reminds me of the Indiana Jones movie, The Last Crusade. Now that probably dates me, um, but um, there's a whole series of Indiana Jones movies. I don't even know how far back um, they go, but uh, The Last Crusade, Indiana Jones is looking for the Holy Grail and they finally make it to this cave, uh, which the Holy Grail is supposed to be in and there's competition um, as they're attempting to get to the Holy uh, Grail. And um, Indiana Jones is in there and um, then someone else comes in who wants the Holy Grail, but no one knows what the Holy Grail is. And what is the Holy Grail? And there's kind of a prophet in there with them. And, you know, he says, you know, it's important when you choose the Holy Grail because the Holy Grail um, chosen wisely will give life. The Holy Grail chosen poorly will take life away. And, and so the first people who choose the Grail, there's a doctor and um, an important person who actually is a, a Nazi, but they're going to choose first. And there's all of these chalices lined up on the, uh, there's all these chalices lined up on the wall and the shelf here. And they are gorgeous and they are beautiful and they are rich looking. And the doctor actually goes and chooses one of the best looking, the most beautiful, the most ornate of these chalices and says, this must be the Holy Grail. And the um, individual she is with then takes that chalice, dips it in the water and drinks it. And the words of the prophet and he disintegrates into skeletal mass and disintegrates right before your eyes. It's kind of a gory scene, um, but it wasn't the Holy Grail. It was a, a false representation, but it looked the best. Um, it represented the symbol of beauty and power and glory. And yet um, when, when he drinks and he disintegrates, the prophet says he has chosen poorly. Indiana Jones, meanwhile, still has all of these chalices to choose from. And they're all beautiful and ornate, but there is a chalice that is actually hidden in a back row kind of behind all of the beautiful ones that is really just a plain chalice. It's very earthy. It just looks like a, um, something that was molded out of clay. There's nothing really beautiful. It's very plain. It's very simple. And Indiana Jones chooses that chalice and that chalice brings life. I think as we advent ourselves toward Christmas, I think at times, even when it comes, you know, what, what is Advent's Holy Grail? Advent's Holy Grail, or the Holy Grail of all of Scripture is Jesus. He's what Scripture is about. He's what everything pointed to. Um, but, but the Holy Grail of Advent is Jesus. And yet John the Baptist seems to be drinking of the wrong Jesus. He's drinking of the glory Jesus, uh, the one that's going to rescue him from prison, the one that's going to overthrow Herod and ultimately probably Rome, the, the one who is going to um, um, make, make my life go a lot more smoother. I mean, are you, should I be looking for someone else? Because the Jesus I'm really looking for, I don't think would have me in prison. He wouldn't have me struggling. He wouldn't have me in this place of suffering. And Jesus answers um, John's disciples and he says this, go tell him, John, what you hear and see. The blind receive sight and the lame walk. Lepers are cleansed and the deaf hear and the dead are raised up and the poor have good news preach them. You know what Jesus did? He actually quotes from the book of Isaiah. Well, there's nobody who know the book of Isaiah like John the Baptist. He's like Isaiah reincarnate. He's like Isaiah the prophet. Some even asked if um, John the Baptist was Isaiah. So he actually goes and quotes something that John would know um, fairly well and points John actually back 
to Isaiah's representation of a suffering servant of, of this one who would come and he's saying to John, yes, I am the one because I'm actually the fulfillment of Isaiah 35. These things are happening. Um, blind are receiving their sight, lame are, are, are walking, good news is preached to the poor, and um, I, I am here, and I am providing that. And even when Jesus lived, there were blind people that didn't get healed, there were lame people that um, didn't walk, there were poor people that remained poor, Jesus didn't heal every blind person in the whole world of that day, um, but he gave us a taste of who he is, and a reminder that we too live in Advent times, Advent comes and Advent is in the dark. And um, it comes to us in those hidden places. Um, Jesus goes on to say in verse 25 of this very chapter of Matthew 11, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that you have hidden these things from the wise and understanding and revealed to them and revealed them to little children. Yes, Father, this was your gracious will that in the midst of Advent, in the midst of our lostness, in the midst of our weariness, in the midst of our waiting, in the midst of ourselves, even asking and questioning, just like John the Baptist, is Jesus really the one? Is he really the Holy Grail? And, and I love what the prophet said in the, in the Indiana Jones movie. You know, if you choose poorly, um, it, it won't lead to life. Um, it will lead to the opposite of life. And Jesus is saying that version of me, the glory version of me, the name it and claim it, the, 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 the idea that there's no more struggling um, as, as you embrace me or Christianity is actually a destructive path and it actually won't give you life. Every single time that view of Jesus will take life away from you because Jesus just becomes a tool for you to get on to bigger and better things in your story and in your life. But for John the Baptist who is missing it, Jesus is so hidden in the stories of the gospel. I, I, don't, I don't see how we can't see that even in this portion of scripture, he's hidden from John the Baptist. That John the Baptist has missed him. But in the hiddenness is where Jesus is, in the lostness, and it's his gracious will to do this because it's in his gracious will that he comes to us in this Advent, this season of longing and the season um, of, of waiting that um, if we're looking for the glory Jesus, if we're looking for the glory story, um, that glory Jesus and that glory story actually won't lead us to life. It will lead us away from life. But if Jesus reveals himself to us in the hiddenness and in the dark places, he even goes on to say to all of those glory seekers of his day, which were the religious right before the end of this 25, you know what? You guys think you've got it and you think you have this version of Messiah and you think you have this version of me. It will actually be worse for you and not won't lead you to life. Your glory story will actually lead you away from life and it will be worse for you on that day than Sodom and Gomorrah who don't even have a glory story. Um, that the religious um, and those seeking a glory Jesus will have it worse than Sodom and Gomorrah on that day um, because Jesus is comes in the hidden things and so he comes in a manger you know Jesus comes in suffering. You know, Jesus is born and then lots of babies die because Jesus is born. I mean, how does that make any sense? You know, and Jesus comes fleeing and he comes running away and he comes running away to Egypt and Jesus comes hidden in the womb of a, of a teenage girl um, who doesn't um, have a husband. Um, and Jesus is hidden. Um, Jesus' glory is always hidden in a barn. It's hidden in a manger. It's hidden in a room in two people that nobody really wants. It's hidden in a womb of, of a teenage girl. It is always in the place of the least amount of glory. It's always in the place that we would least expect it. Expect it. Um, and yet that's where we are at. And I love how chapter 11 ends when it says this at the end. I mean, this is actually the first, it's the basis of Rhythms of Grace is this passage um, at the end. Come unto me, all you who are labor and heavy laden, I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. 
for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. You see, you will miss Jesus. If, if you say you never struggle, then Matthew 11, 28 to 30 is not for you. Jesus is for the weary. He is for the struggler. He is for the uh, heavy burden. He is for the one who need an easy yoke. And you know what? If you're given a message anywhere where the yoke is not easy and the burden is not light, then it's not Jesus. It's not Jesus. It's not his message. His message is, his yoke is easy. His burden is light. He comes to you in the hiddenness. He comes to you in your lostness. He comes to you in your weariness. He comes to you in um, your struggle. And maybe the Holy Grail, not maybe, the Holy Grail of Advent, the Holy Grail of Scripture is Jesus because that's where life is found. But in addition to that, the Holy Grail where Jesus is found is your weariness, it is your lostness, um, it is your suffering, and it is your struggle because it is in that place that Jesus is saying to John the Baptist, it's why I came. You may be asking if I'm the one because you're in prison and you're about to die in prison. You have this view of Jesus that you're missing. I've eluded you, John the Baptist, but I'm here. I'm here in the small, in the weak, in the frail. I'm in the barn. I'm in the manger. I'm in the unwed mother's womb. I'm in a flight to Egypt. I'm in your story today in all of the small things that no one ever notices, all of the tears that no one ever gets to see. My yoke is easy and my burden is light. I am your holy grail of Advent that you are waiting for, that came once and is coming again. I am what you drink from. I am the living water. I am the bread of life. You eat of my body and you drink of my blood and you will find life because I'm hidden in a nail scarred body and I'm hidden in my shed blood. That's where the glory story is. The glory story of Advent is in the slain yet risen lamb. And that's the good news for you and for me, that the hidden God reveals himself to us in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger, in the womb of an unwed mother, on a night where the first people to know will be shepherds, nomads, gypsies, not the king, who killed John the Baptist, but an unwed mother in a barn, in a manger. That's the sign that the shepherds look for because the glory is all there. The glory is in the cross. And the glory is in the manger. The glory is in all the hiddenness, in all the struggle, and in all the suffering. If we spend our lives dismissing the struggle we spend our lives dismissing Jesus. Advent reminds us that he is present and he has come to us and that is good news of great joy for all the people because our savior has been born. Peace. You can join us tomorrow. Um, Rhythms of grace. If, um, Elizabeth is um, available and ready, and then Sunday morning at 10 a.m. Um, you can hear more Advent um, as uh, we gather together as weary ones, gathering together weary and heavy laden to hear about the one whose yoke is easy 
and his burden is light. His name is Jesus, and he is the Holy Grail.